Hi, it's Hal from Light with another video recap of Monday Night Light, a free live weekly web seminar every Monday from 6.30 to 7.30 Pacific. Last night we talked about building an action to help our output workflow. I'll demonstrate that again here today in about 10 minutes. The first thing that we're going to do to build this action is to create a new action set which will serve as a folder to hold the action. We find that at the bottom of our actions panel and it looks like a small folder icon. Clicking on new set, I'm going to name this my output actions and hit OK. Once I have my new folder, it's into this folder that I can put any additional actions designed to help build that effective and efficient workflow. Now if you have a multi-layer document that you're using to build this action, you don't need to do this next step. But if you just have a single layer document, I'd like you to take that layer and duplicate it. Not required in our output, but it's going to help us build the action. So now that we're all prepped, make sure that Output Actions is highlighted, and then click onto the small Add New Action icon, or Create New Action, here at the bottom of the Actions panel. When we click on that, give your action a name. For me, I'm going to call this Make a Print, because that's really what this is all about. I take a master file, size it, sharpen it, and send it to the printer. I'll leave the set as Output Actions, no function key, no color, and hit Record. When you hit record, Photoshop will begin to keep track of every single thing you do. Remember that it only keeps track of button actuations or menu items selected. It has nothing to do with time, so there's no rush when you're going through and making this action. I'll hit record. The first thing I want to do is if I had a multi-layer document, I want to flatten it. Not that it's required for printing, but it's going to make things a little bit easier when we go to sharpen. And typically, our master file retains layers. All of our output files don't. So I'll come up to Layer, Flatten Image. After the image is flat, our next step is to Size. So we'll go to Image, Image Size, and all I want you to do is make some change inside of this dialog box. It doesn't matter. We're going to use this as a placeholder and revisit it in just a little bit. Hit OK, and we'll see that the image has been resized as well as added here to our action. Thinking about our output workflow, after we size an image, the next thing we do is sharpen it. And also, referencing building that luminance mask we did a few weeks ago, we want to recreate that action right here. Recall the steps, duplicating the background. With that background duplicated, then we want to go to the channels panel and select the channel with the highest level of contrast. Now, for our action, all you need to do is select one channel, and that's going to be good enough. We can modify this future in the future in our action. With a channel selected, drag that channel down to the Create New Channel icon, and we end up with a copy. Onto the copy, now we start prepping the mask. Filter, Stylize, Find Edges. Invert via Control or Command I, and then launch into Image, Adjustments, Levels. Much like our Image Size dialog, we don't need to change anything here. We don't really need to do anything. Hit OK. We'll revisit this when we run our action on a real image. Once the Levels adjustment is complete, we run a, want to run a couple more filters. So we'll go to Filter, Noise, Median. I like to use two pixels as my placeholder and hit OK. Revisit the filters again filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and once again a two pixel radius onto the blur. We know that in our action that we built previously for this luminance mask we painted. Now we're going to add a stop to do that in just a little bit. But since the Gaussian blur is complete we will now hold down the control key on Windows, the command key on a Mac, and click onto the red copy channel thumbnail, which gives us marching ants. When you see the marching ants, it's time to take the red copy, throw it away, come back to the Layers panel, making sure the background copy is active, I want you to add a layer mask. Now at this point, I think it's a good idea to click back on to the layer thumbnail itself and make sure that you rename it and give it something reasonable to you, like Sharpen. You could have done that step earlier if you like to. So with the layer thumbnail active, or the layer active, with an appropriate name, it's then time to run our sharpening filter. So filter, 
sharpen smart sharpen we're going to access this dialog box later right now it's just a placeholder in the action so click OK once the smart sharpen filter is complete then our action at this point is finished and we can stop recording now we know there are a couple other things that we want to do to this action to make it truly usable for us the first of those is there are at least three dialog boxes that we want to see the first of those is image size so we'll click here onto the toggle dialog on and off for image size for levels and also for smart sharpen this is going to show us each of those dialogs if you wanted to see the median and the Gaussian blur filters you could toggle those on here as well we're almost done but the final thing we need to do is insert a couple of stops places where the action will stop running give us some additional information and then we can make some choices the first of those I like to do by clicking on to flatten image the very first step and here we're going to give ourselves a warning to make sure that we've saved our master file and we don't overwrite it so for that I'm going to come up here to options insert stop and give myself a message remember to save the master file check allow continue and hit OK now notice that it put the stop after flatten image which isn't where we want it so click on the word stop and drag it up inside your action the next place that we want to stop is when we want to select a specific channel so highlight duplicate current layer which is when we built our sharpen layer originally click to the options insert stop again the message you want to add select the channels panel and highlight the channel with the most contrast allow it continue again and hit OK now back in our action creation we had selected a specific channel we need to delete this right now so select red channel or whichever one you initially put in there click on it and either drag it to the trash can or just click on the trash can and hit OK the final place we want to insert a stop is right after Gaussian blur so highlight Gaussian blur insert stop and type in here now is the time to paint with white or black as needed to finish the mask once again allow it continue and hit OK once you have this complete your action is finished so let's see if it works we drag our sharpen layer to the trash go up to make a print and click play the first thing remember to save the master file alright I've already done that hit continue if you need to save your master file and you don't want to overwrite anything hit stop make your changes and then go back over and hit play again well, here's our image size dialog we'll follow the image size recommendations that we gave out in midnight out Monday Night Light a few weeks ago and hit OK now select the channels panel and highlight the channel with the most contrast OK I'll hit stop channels and find the channel with the highest contrast I'm gonna go with green and hit play there's our levels dialog and we can move the white and the black point sliders to help identify the edge contrast I hit OK it says now is the time to paint stop grab a brush I'm gonna paint with black and just remove some of those areas here down near the bottom once I'm finished hit play again this is where we go in with our smart sharpen dialog and do our Goldilocks style of sharpening I would just assume that this is okay for our demonstration today so I'll hit okay and our action is complete we have a file that has been sized, sharpened, and we're ready to send it to the printer. If you have any additional questions, please shoot me an email, hal at lightworkshops.com, or give me a call, 805-528-7385.
As always, check us out on the blog, lightworkshops.blogspot.com, or follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash lightworkshops. Thanks. Have a great day.